Hey everyone, and welcome to the Complete Dentures One course at New York City College of Technology. This is lecture seven out of the set, and it's on denture teeth. Once again, my name is Professor Oscar Galvis. Let's begin. To begin, let's talk about some denture tooth characteristics. Teeth differ significantly in shape, size, and shade from one person to another. So to allow this, uh, manufacturers produce many different kinds of denture teeth. In fact, there are thousands of possible combinations. Most commonly, denture teeth come in sets. Uh, more commonly, they come in a maxillary anterior set, a mandibular anterior set, a maxillary posterior set, and a mandibular posterior set. Uh, these match sets are made from porcelain or plastic. More commonly today, many teeth are made out of PMMA, polymethyl methacrylate. You can mill your own teeth. You can 3D print your own teeth. A uh, very long time ago, teeth were available in twos, as you see in the image above. But more than common is that we're able to purchase our teeth in four main cards. And the way they're purchased are you have your one by sixes, as they say. Those are your anterior six teeth, as you see in the photo here. We have our maxillary six anterior teeth on the top, and then the uh, mandibular six anterior teeth on the mandibular. And then we have our one by eights, commonly referred to as your posterior teeth cards. So on our image on the top, we have. Uh, mandibular posterior teeth and the F32 mold we see there is the maxillary posterior teeth. Uh, once again, it is common that these cards come in 1x6s and 1x8s. Four cards in total make up a complete denture set. Some terms you'll hear throughout this lecture are mold, which have to do with the shape of the tooth, and obviously shade, which has to do with the color of the tooth. We'll get more into that a little bit later. To begin, let's talk about our posterior teeth and how they work in terms of function. There are multiple different options when it comes to different types of posterior teeth. So let's talk about them. Okay, so posterior denture tooth shape, also known as mold. Posterior denture tooth shape refers to the presence or absence of cusps. The common denture tooth cusp angles are about 33, 30, 20, and zero degrees as follows. The 20 degree posterior denture teeth are referred to as semi-anatomical teeth. The 20 degree posterior teeth enjoy a great deal of popularity. They cause less lateral denture displacing forces than a 30 degree tooth and have better aesthetics than a zero degree tooth. Now what exactly does that mean? Well, let's talk about zero degree teeth. Zero degree teeth are referred to as monoplane teeth, also known as non-anatomical teeth. These denture teeth have no cusp inclines and they are supplied in porcelain, plastic, or plastic with metal inserts according to the Air Force Manual. They are rarely used in cases that require articulation with natural teeth. Zero degree teeth are favored in cases where patients have poor muscle coordination or poor ridges or when the ridges are in crossbite. And then we have our 33 or 30 degree denture teeth which are con considered to be fully anatomic teeth. These posterior denture teeth look more natural in a patient's mouth and seem to have more chewing efficiency than teeth with smaller cusp angles. Complete dentures with anatomic denture teeth are more commonly made for patients with good residual ridges because these dentures have a tendency to be displaced when the mandible moves into lateral excursions. Residual ridges must have at least moderate vertical height to oppose this tendency. We spoke about denture teeth coming in different types of materials. Uh, in the past, porcelain denture teeth were very popular. However, t in today's world, uh, the reason why they were so popular was that porcelain denture teeth tended to be more aesthetic. But with the advancements in the current materials we have, it's very common that a, a $50 card of teeth would actually just be acrylic or layered composite. These materials actually look just as good as porcelain teeth, and uh, porcelain teeth are not as commonly used as they once were. However, since they are in the Air Force Manual, we will cover the topic of porcelain teeth for your exams. So when it comes to porcelain denture teeth, it should be stated that denture bases are made from acrylic resins, right? The pink portion of a denture is made of acrylic plastic. Porcelain is an inert material that does not chemically bond to the acrylic resin in the base. 
Therefore, mechanical retention in the form of pins or undercut holes, also known as diatorics, are necessary to retain the porcelain denture teeth in the denture base. In comparison, when using a plastic tooth or a acrylic or resin tooth, uh, since the base of the denture is made out of acrylic as well, they actually have a chemical bond, which is why more so the industry has geared towards fabricating aesthetic acrylic teeth rather than porcelain teeth because they bond better to the denture base. If there is very little room between the arches of a complete denture setup, a slightly oversized porcelain tooth might be ground to fit the space. However, care must be taken when grinding these porcelain teeth because porcelain is glass and it can be ruined the instant the mechanical retention is cut away. If there's no retention on the porcelain tooth, it cannot adhere itself to the denture base. Usually when, there, when there's a restorative space issue and teeth need to be grinded, it's a better idea to use acrylic or plastic teeth. The design features of porcelain teeth uh, differ than an acrylic resin tooth. As we see in the illustration here and the comparison uh, between porcelain and acrylic denture teeth, there are variations and differences. Uh, the design features of an artificial tooth are the collar of a tooth. We'll talk about that first. The collar is that area on the facial side of the denture tooth about one millimeter wide that extends from the gingival edge of the groove across the facial surface. It's embedded in the plastic denture base and remains underneath the denture base and helps with retention of the denture tooth. Sometimes a part of the collar is intentionally left uncovered to simulate some root surface or recession on a tooth. On the porcelain denture tooth, you can find uh, the biggest difference between porcelain and acrylic being that the por since the porcelain teeth don't bond to the plastic denture base, you'll find pins there, right? So porcelain anterior teeth have pins that keep the teeth seated in the base of the material. Other than that, both teeth uh, tend to have a neck. Uh, the neck of the denture tooth is the bulge on the facial side that is just incisal or occlusal to the collar, and it's... Uh, it's a limited groove and a bite. The bite is the lingual surface of an anterior denture tooth. A shut. The shut is the portion of the lingual surface of an anterior porcelain denture tooth where the pins are located. So you have the pin and the shut. Those are two areas on a porcelain tooth that do not exist on a acrylic tooth. Uh, the ridge lap. Ridge lap is that portion of the denture tooth between the shut and the collar that overlaps, uh, that laps over the ridge of the cast. Diatorics. Diatoric is the hole located in the ridge lap of posterior porcelain denture tooth that serves to hold the tooth into the denture base. Additional retention is obtained through the vent holes that extend from the diatoric to the mesial and distal surfaces of the porcelain denture tooth. Then we have a lingual finish line. The lingual line of union between the tooth and the denture base is the lingual finish line. So that line on the lingual portion is where the denture tooth ends and the acrylic denture base should begin. It's where they meet, almost a margin line, if you will. There are sometimes identification marks on denture teeth. Identifying marks are found on the mesial portion of the ridge lap of each posterior tooth. One raised dot identifies a first premolar or a first molar, while two dots indicate a second premolar or a second molar. Again, this is common amongst different manufacturers. However, not all manufacturers practice this within their uh, denture teeth characteristics. So the design features of plastic denture teeth. Plastic denture teeth are retained within a denture base because the tooth and denture base material bond together chemically. Now this does not mean that you can also add a mechanical retention through cutting holes or diatorics into plastic teeth, but they do not come with those mechanical retention properties uh, or characteristics. So uh, you are really counting on the chemical bond between the denture base and the tooth if you do not plan to place uh, mechanical retention onto the plastic denture tooth yourself. 
Ordinarily, there is no need for mechanical retention, but some of the newer filled resin plastic teeth do not blond, bond well and require chemical treatments or dietorics. This is especially true for uh, composite teeth. Even though composite teeth are a type of resin, composite and acrylic uh, are not the same and they do require a little bit of uh, bonding agents in order for them to bond fully. Now the design features of porcelain and plastic teeth are essentially the same, except for these following differences. Plastic anterior tooth does not have a shutter pin. The extent of the ridge lap on a plastic anterior tooth is not limited by the shut. The ridge lap carries over to the lingual finish line area and resin posterior denture teeth do not have diatorics. Once again, they don't come with diatorics. However, holes and mechanical retention can be placed on plastic denture teeth if you're looking for that extra assurance that you will also have the chemical bond and mechanical bond. Some disadvantages and advantages when talking about porcelain teeth. The advantages of a porcelain tooth, that porcelain teeth are more lifelike in appearance than plastic teeth. Once again, this is uh, from the Air Force Manual. It's a little dated. Uh, you do have nowadays materials that are not porcelain, uh, that are resin based, that can compete with porcelain teeth. Uh, however, some people may argue that it becomes more of a preference thing and an opinion than uh, factual information when we're talking about appearance and aesthetics. There are more stain resistant, however, and wear resistant because porcelain teeth are harder. They're not as porous as a acrylic or plastic tooth, uh, so they are less likely to be affected by solvents. Now, disadvantages. On the other hand, porcelain denture teeth abrade the natural tooth structure, right? Porcelain's harder than enamel. It could be an issue down the road that porcelain wears the natural opposing teeth if we're talking about a single denture opposing natural dentition. Consequently, porcelain teeth are rarely used to oppose natural teeth. Another problem is that porcelain teeth are prone to fracture on impact since they are glass. Uh, a denture with porcelain teeth that's dropped into a porcelain sink, uh, probably multiple fractures and needing an immense amount of repairs more than a plastic denture that may be able to take uh, the load of the fall. If the occlusal vertical dimension is excessive, opposing porcelain denture teeth may contact and click when the patient talks. Uh, the sound of glass hitting glass, that kind of situation. That's the clicking that they speak of. Also, porcelain teeth cannot be custom ground for a space that is any smaller than leaving the pins or diatoric intact. Uh, what we spoke about before, uh, if restorative space is limited, uh, acrylic or plastic denture teeth are probably the best route to go because they can be grinded and adjusted and still have that chemical bond to the denture base. While in porcelain teeth, if you grind too much of the tooth and lose the diatorics or pins, then the tooth no longer has any kind of retention to stay within the denture base and will pop out. And when talking about plastic teeth and their advantages and disadvantages, uh, when it comes to their advantages, they can be safely ground to fit small spaces because of the shearing strength. Uh, the shearing strength of a plastic is in thin sections is much higher than porcelain. Uh, some plastic teeth chemically unite with the denture base. They bond, so there are no worries about grinding away mechanical retention. Plastic does not abrade enamel, and it is the material of choice for a denture that is opposing natural teeth. And further, when plastic teeth contact each other, they make almost no sound and are much less likely to chip or shatter than porcelain. The disadvantages of plastic teeth when compared to their porcelain counterparts, they are less lifelike. However, as we said in today's world and in the industry of dental technology, uh, denture teeth have come a long way in composites and lifelike PMMA or acrylic. Uh, so this is not necessarily true unless we're talking about a very economic plastic tooth. A very cheap tooth might look uh, unlifelike. However, teeth uh, nowadays, if we're paying a little more for them, plastic and acrylic can look just as aesthetic as porcelain teeth. Uh, now the problem is, is that plastic teeth do have less stain and wear resistance, which means that since they're more porous, they do stain easier and they wear faster because they, they are not as strong as porcelain teeth. And they are more likely to be damaged by solvents because of that. Now that we've gone through the characteristics and different types of denture teeth, now we can talk about selecting anterior denture teeth. The primary factor in selecting anterior denture teeth is the aesthetic effect of the patient's total image. It is vitally important to match the size, shape, color, and arrangement of denture teeth 
to a person's anatomical measurements, face form, sexual characteristics, and age. Pre-extraction records are excellent guides to the patient's original tooth shapes and arrangement. If we look at the image to the left, we can see that this patient still has their canine and central. That single central can serve as a guide for the shaped teeth that would best suit this patient's face. This denture is going to be an immediate denture. Those teeth will then be extracted and a full denture will be fabricated. In selecting, modifying, and arranging denture teeth, they are dictated by what usually holds true for the category of person. Selecting denture teeth for aesthetic value centers around choosing the set's general size, shape, and color. In speaking of color, let's talk about tooth shade. Teeth are blends of grays and yellows, but traces of other colors will most likely be present. Color choice is mainly a function of the patient's age. Natural teeth absorb food and tobacco stains as people get older. Teeth tend to get a little darker with advancing years. One sure way to create a false looking denture is to choose a very light tooth for an elderly person. An argument can be made for selecting light colored teeth for fair skinned uh, blonde people because dark teeth would probably look unsightly. However, there is no justification for routinely choosing dark teeth for people with black hair and dark skins. A man's teeth might be a shade darker than a woman's teeth of the same age, but this is only a guide and not universally true. I find that all this information has come from the Air Force Manual. Uh, in my opinion, this is inaccurate. Many people of different sizes and shapes have different size and shape and colored teeth, uh, not necessarily tying to their hair color or skin color. Everyone has different colored teeth. And if we are talking about making a complete set of denture teeth, uh, the shade is ultimately chosen by the patient and what they would prefer to see when the, they look at themselves and smile at themselves and what's looking back at them in the mirror. Selecting anterior maxillary teeth once again, denture tooth size is a combination of facial length and width. To estimate the maxillary central incisor length, measure the occlusion rim between the occlusal plane and the high lip line as you see in the image to the right. To find the collective width of the six maxillary anterior teeth, measure the distance between the canine lines and add eight millimeters. So as you see, the markings that are made on the occlusal rim by the clinician during the occlusal rim visit is extremely important and vital to you being able to choose the proper size and shape denture tooth for the case. Research has shown that an inverted maxillary incisor tooth has roughly the same shape as the person's face, both in profile and frontal view. A tooth that approximates the shape of a patient's face looks good in that person's mouth. In profile, individuals either have flat or convex surfaces. So the Air Force goes to talk about different types of face forms that may exist. Uh, before we get into the face forms, it should be stated that there is other research that almost disproves this theory of tooth selection. Uh, the concept of maybe fabricating a denture for someone that is extremely overweight, their face would tend to be a little rounder. I think it's important to focus on maybe skeletal structure, but uh, the overall face shape of a person uh, shouldn't only be dictated by the shape of their head versus in, in association to the shape of their tooth. Uh, if uh, the person was severely overweight and then lost a lot of weight, that face form might uh, aesthetically change. So things to think about when choosing the molds. However, in the Air Force Manual, they do talk about this and a majority of the country does still follow this thought process of face forms. So viewing people's faces frontally, there's four basic face forms and three subgroups. The basic face forms are square, tapering, square tapering, and ovoid. The modified or subgroups of these are square ovoid, tapering ovoid, square tapering ovoid. In this presentation, you'll see a breakdown of the definitions of each of these. So I'd like you to review these on your own time and understanding what each of these face forms mean and their definitions. We have square tapering, square tapering ovoid, understanding which ones are the basic face forms and which ones are the subgroups. 
So each manufacturer publishes a tooth mold chart that presents pictures of available shapes along with a statement of their sizes. The face form analysis of the patient helps develop a firm idea of the needs of the patient in terms of the anterior tooth size, shape, and color. To order denture teeth, obtain the manufacturer's code for the set of maxillary anterior denture teeth that best fits the size and shape specifications. For instance, a company might have a mold or size shape of tooth labeled as a A2. A2 is, their, is the title and name that they call that shape tooth, um, but more than commonly it's usually something that doesn't line up with a shade of a tooth. So let's say P22 is a mold or a uh, R455, let's say. R455 is a maxillary anterior mold that exists for the company Colzer. And on the tooth card, it would also have a shade, let's say A2. So R455 would be in your mold chart. The mold chart would tell you what size teeth go with an R455 in the lower anterior and in the posterior. And all you have to do is select the proper shade. So the mold chart actually guides you as long as you can dictate your maxillary six anterior based on the markings on your occlusion rim. You then use that measurement to decide your maxillary six and the mold chart tells you what other teeth uh, would go with that size maxillary anterior teeth. Uh, you identify the tooth color, like I said, and then the mold chart does the rest. And mandibular anterior teeth, once again, the mold chart indicates what anterior tooth size and shape goes well with the chosen maxillary, but the mold chart is only a guide and there are ways to mix and match these different teeth. So you are not locked into exactly what the mold chart tells you. And for example, a class two or class three case could dictate a step up or down in size while the shape and color could remain constant. Uh, so depending on the classification, as we spoke about before, angles classification, uh, tooth relationship, the size of the teeth may vary, and that is completely up to you as a technician to decide what teeth would best fit the arch forms. That brings us to the end of our lecture today. Uh, please brush up on your readings. Your required reading for this week is from page 235 to 243. It's on denture teeth. Please remember you have a discussion and a multiple choice assessment this week as well. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Uh, hope you had a good lecture today and look forward to our next meeting. Have a great day.